Hey, this is Brian. That is my calendar. I'm going to walk through how I use that calendar. I've been meaning to do that for a long time, and I just referenced it in another video. So I'm taking a break from uh, reading Angela Duckworth's new book, Grit, which is phenomenal, um, to walk you through some thoughts on how I use this calendar. First of all, that is a scheduled blood test I'm doing through Wellness FX. Check them out, wellnessfx.com. It's my birthday in a few weeks, and I'm committed to being healthier than I've ever been in my life. Uh, and one way to measure that is via blood work. So I have that posted there to remind me that's coming up. Do the right thing. Live with Arte. There's a little more Arte. Uh, anyway, here we are. So um, on Sunday of this month, Hal Elrod's film crew came out to uh, film me for the Miracle Morning, little fuzzy, documentary, um, where I talked about my morning practices and stuff like that. I'm really looking forward to sharing more on that documentary. Guys like Robin Sharma, Jack Canfield, I think it's going to be awesome. Um, but we can think of this as how to create a miracle month. So if you want to create a miracle morning, how do you create a miracle month? This is how I do it and how I've been evolving it. If we unrolled this thing of uh, calendar sheets like that, this is, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half worth of doing this, um, you'll see that I've just, I've tried to make 4% improvements and just get a little bit clearer and build better systems to help me have great days, which in aggregate lead to hopefully a great month uh, and then uh, great years and God willing, great decades. Anyway, long prelude. When I start the month, I basically um, map out. So on April 30th, I sat down and uh, I created this calendar um, and filled in things like this, AM1, AM2, PM1, right? I'll tell you what that means in a second. And then naps, digital sunsets, dad time, family time, and love. And then uh, my physical commitments every day, one sun salutation, 10 pull-ups, 100 burpees, 1,000 meters road, and 10,000 steps walked. Uh, and then what I do is I go through the day is I basically just check those off, which you can see through uh, the last few days. Um, and it's really exciting for me for a number of reasons. One, I've, I've articulated what I aspire to do this month and on a daily basis. And then I celebrate the progress. So I usually write more things up here as the month goes on. But my number one compass is always Arte, right? So can I express the highs within myself moment to moment to moment? It's the key to flourishing, the Greeks tell us. It's the one word that summarizes my philosophy. It's my mantra when I meditate. Um, it's what I come back to moment to moment to moment when I'm doing my work and, and actually living with Arte. And then I want to celebrate progress. I've got huge goals um, and, and what I want to do with my life, but I really want to make sure I'm celebrating progress, right? So every single day throughout the day, I celebrate when I do these little things. So first thing I do is I meditate, right? So last night... Went to bed at nine, got up at five with a happy face, right? Uh, and then meditated for 20 minutes. And then after meditating, I immediately do a little opening series, right? It's like five minutes of stretching and basic yoga and one sun salutation. I mark that off. And I, when I mark that off, I smile to myself. And I say, you know what? That's like me. Uh, I haven't done a class on self-image 101 yet. I just traded messages with a member. I need to do that. But one of the ways we cultivate our self-image is... We do the right thing and then we feast on it. And, and it doesn't need to be big things, right? So every single morning when I do my sun salutation, I say, that's like me. They say, I'm going to do this and I do it. And that fires me up. You know, it gets me a little misty even as I say that. It's such a subtle thing. But when we affirm that we are the type of people who do what we aspire to do more and more consistently, that's amazing. And then, of course, when we don't do it, we don't beat ourselves up. We say needs work. I talk about this a lot in Confidence 101, the master class, right? You, you mess up. Okay, well, don't get upset with yourself. Just say, okay, that needs work. What could I have done differently to hit my target? Awesome. Go do that next time. Done. And then next time you do it right, you celebrate it, and you groove that pattern into your mind rather than spinning out every time you fall short um, and then, you know, working against yourself. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you a little more about what this means. So AM1 for me is the time block that I'm working in right now. So I get up at 5 a.m. My family's still asleep. They won't get up till like 7.30, 8 o'clock, uh, which is awesome for me. <laughs> I get to crank. So I get to do my meditation and then I get to um, do what I'm going to do, right? So 
this morning, what did I do? This morning I read Grit and then I realized I needed to do some videos to keep my streak alive. So I busted out a couple of videos, right? Plus videos times three. This is the third one I've done this morning, actually. Right? And then I got this little target. So I'm all about targets in my classes. You know that if you've taken the master classes, we need to have a target, right? So every single morning, I want to I want to hit this AM1 target. I want to have a great day. I didn't get online, right? That's what this line is for. This line represents getting online. I didn't hit it yesterday. Getting online after I've executed an AM1, AM2, and PM1 time block of deep work. That's how I'm going to achieve what I want to achieve in my life. Not by hopping online here and being reactive first thing uh, in the morning. I taught a class yesterday on sleep, optimal sleep 101. 50% of people go to bed with their iPhones or smartphones next to their head, in their bed, right, or whatever, next to their bed. And the last thing they do at night is check their iPhone. And the first thing they do in the morning is check their smartphone. That's not smart. You're being reactive. You're blowing your consciousness up, which a whole nother conversation you're going to get take longer to get into deep sleep, and then you're going to spend less time in deep sleep than people that create a buffer between their activities in the night and their sleep time. Anyway, don't go online first thing in the morning. Be creative, not reactive. I'm committed to that. These are my deep work blocks. Um, So anyway, that's part of AM1, and I do that every single day. Like that's every once in a while being online and, and sharing some things with my right hand genius, um, Evan, shout out, thank you, Evan, is my number one priority. I decide, I decide, hey, I've done some journaling on strategy and I want to share that. I'll get online and I'll do that, right? But it's a conscious choice and it's rare relative to the reading and writing that I've committed to doing. Another thing that I've, a little 4% distinction. So I do 100 burpees a day and I've done that for a really long time. And I just do them in sets of 10. These days I'm doing step back burpees, not a big deal, right? I used to bang out the normal burpees, got up to 300 burpees in a row. Okay, that was fun. And now I'm just in consistency mode. I'm not looking to do anything special with my burpees. I just want to do them consistently. It's more of a psychological practice for me than a, than a physical one even. Um, anyway, I do 100 a day. But there were some days where I kind of dreaded doing them because I didn't do them until the end of the day, right? And yet I also noticed that I feel really great if I bang them out early in the day. So I realized, oh, I've got to make this a goal. And I'm going to do 50 of those burpees, five simple sets. I never do 50 in a row. I do, I do 10, and then I'll take 10 or 15 or 20 seconds off or 30 seconds off, or maybe I'll take 10 minutes off or just go do much more work, right? But I do 50 of those before 8 a.m., and then I make the little hash mark here. I've done one, right? It's like six. Actually, I'll show you. It is, uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's 7 o'clock in about 10 seconds because I set my, my alarm. There you go. It's actually 7 o'clock in 10 seconds. I set my alarm for 6.30 so it goes off every single morning, which tells me, do your first set of burpees, right? And it doesn't matter what I'm doing, I do my first set of burpees, period. And my game is, I try to set it so that I'm resetting my chronograph, literally, at exactly 24 hours. It's pretty funny, like I could literally set my watch to this. Uh, And that's again, it's a psychological creative challenge for me. Just do what I say I'm gonna do. So I do that. And then I do these 50 burpees before 8 a.m., right? And I hit this target and I feel great. So I go bam, bam, bam. Then I cross that out. More progress. I celebrate the progress. Um, and I've also stimulated my, my physiology. We know that exercise gives you a 12-hour mood boost. And that's enough to do it. You do 50 burpees before 8 a.m., you're feeling pretty great. And then I'll usually do a workout later in the day, which I document. Hit workout the other day. Uh, I rested that day and I did a strength workout that day and I keep track of that over here. How many hit workouts did I do? How many strength workouts? How many hikes? Etc. cetera. Um, let's look a little bit more. So then what else do I have on here? Well, I like to make waves. There we go. So I didn't start making this little sign until later in the month, but there we go. A big part of my teaching and my personal practice is to make waves. I used to grind all day long and I'd find myself... You know, it's an easy way to get burned out. We got to make waves. We got to be on and then we got to be off, on and off. And naps are a great way to turn to flip the off switch. I do what I call napitations most days, not every day, but yesterday I did about a 20 minute nap. Day before I did a six minute nap. 
Research out of Harvard shows that even a six-minute nap can boost your mood and performance. Six minutes. You don't need to go nuts. Just laying down and taking X number of deep breaths is a huge part of the practice. On Monday, I took an hour and 40-minute nap. I worked hard on Sunday, and this was kind of a recovery day for me because Sunday wound up being a, a work day, and I literally took an hour and 40-minute nap. James Moss, one of the leading sleep researchers, says, you want to take a 20-minute or less nap or a 90-minute nap. You can get a full REM cycle in there. That's pretty restorative. And then on Sunday, I did a 20-minute nap. I check that off as I do it. Awesome. And then another thing I check off is DS. That represents digital sunset for me. Uh, as you know, if you know my work, digital sunset means the sun goes down and all electronics go off in the Johnson household. Um, we turn on non-blue light uh, lights um, to let our melatonin do its job. We don't need to jack up our cortisol um, at night by being stimulated by blue light, iPads, iPhones, TVs, etc. We go dark, right? Try to align with our circadian rhythms. Yesterday in Sleep 101, I asked the question, what percentage of your DNA do you think is connected to circadian rhythms, right? So how much of your genetic code is tied to and run by really and dictated by circadian rhythms? What would you guess? It's 98%. 98% of your genetic code is driven by and connected to circadian rhythms, meaning when the sun goes down, that, that lack of light influences your DNA. And it's only over the last 150 years since the invention of the light bulb, in the last 10 years, since the invention of ubiquitous blue light in the form of smartphones, et cetera, that we've had the opportunity to jack up our, our consciousness via this artificial light. We were prey. We'd be eaten back in the day if we were out doing active things at night. So I set a digital sunset. That's really important to me. This is the number one hack I've created. And you got to know that this digital sunset, this, whether for you it's 60 minutes before you go to bed, you turn off your computer, et cetera. For me, it's hours, right? But that decision, for me, drives the quality of this. I would rather set an alarm here, right, than here. I don't want alarm to get me out of bed. I can't remember the last time I used an alarm to get out of bed on a regular basis. If I need to go to the airport super early, okay, cool, an alarm. But otherwise, I wake up at 4.54 this morning, no alarm, feeling refreshed. That's how I want to roll, and I do that because I set the alarm here, and then I check that box off every single day. Did I hit a digital sunset or not? Now, I don't do that every single night, but pretty much every single night, and work isn't what keeps me up. Maybe I'll watch a movie or something, um, et cetera, et cetera, but I'm not going to be using digital stuff for work after I've put in a good day. I don't need to go all day. I need to make waves, recover. Then I've got my little dad time here. I did have some dad time. Actually, it was a little modified yesterday because I taught. Uh, but my commitment is I want to spend an hour plus with my son, an hour every morning. It's usually 30 to 75, 90 minutes or two or three hours on the weekends. But we go on an adventure. We go to the park. We have fun. We give mom time to do her meditation and journaling and all that kind of stuff. So this is really important to me. And I have it on a daily basis. A great day, a masterpiece day is going to be created when I spend time with my son. Boom, done. Check that one off. And then time with my family, uh, which is what I do after I shut down digital sunset style. And then love. I used to have PI, positive interactions, based on John Gottman's work, right? Um, creating a five to one ratio of positive to negative interactions. Now it's just love. Just, just focus on love and be positive and be sweet um, with my wife and with my family and with other people I interact with. Um, and be kind and generous, etc. So that's a look at at a good part of the board. Now, it's amazing how quickly this thing gets filled up. And I can see the quality of my days. I want to actually measure my day. So yesterday was a great day. I taught Optimal Sleep 101. I prepped for Optimal Sleep 101 in my AM1. I taught it in the AM2. And then I had some business fun. And then I read um, Grit. It was a great day, right? Uh, I had a very good day the day before that. I had a good day, but it was more of a recovery day on Monday. Uh, I didn't even judge Sunday. It was a, it was a very good day. <laughs> um, but there you go. That is a long look at my monthly calendar. Hope you got something there. And uh, here's to stringing together moments and days and weeks and months and years and decades of getting just full percent better as we live our ideals and give our gifts to the world. Appreciate you. Have an awesome day. 
Hey guys, this is Brian. A lot of people don't know what I do beyond these YouTube videos I put up, so I thought I'd give you a quick tour of our membership platform. Uh, thousands of people have joined us already, 10 bucks a month, get access to a ton of stuff that's uh, in addition to what I put up on YouTube for free. So the basic idea is you just watched a micro class, hope you enjoyed that. I share, I just started doing these micro classes, but I now share over 50 of these per month. We've shared dozens so far, and it's basically a quick class on my absolute favorite stuff across the different domains of optimal living. Two to three, maybe five minute little micro classes on how to optimize your life. In addition to that, you get access to every single one of our philosopher's notes. We now have over 250 philosopher's notes on some really, really good books uh, a lot of them. In each one of them, you're familiar with the PNTV videos if you've watched many of those, but we also have PDFs and MP3s of our Philosopher's Notes. So here's, let's take a look at what a PDF looks like. This is an example of a Philosopher's Note. It's a six-page PDF where I basically share some of my favorite thoughts, riff on it, talk about how other teachers say the same things, and give you a nice playful kick in the butt to go out and apply the wisdom. That is a Philosopher's Note. I record that as an MP3 that you can download as well. And uh, 250 of those. I produce 10 of those at least per month that I share with you in addition to the micro classes. And then you also get access to all of our old classes. We have the five day immersion reboot, habits 101, confidence 101, getting stuff done 101, meditation 101, and then future classes, including relationships 101, energy 101, purpose 101, biz 101, goals 101, etc. So there you go. Uh, really blessed to have some extraordinary support. And I will share with you where you go to sign up. I'll put a link to this, but basically cruise on over here. You can sign up and this is the kind of response we've gotten so far um, from our members. It's pretty neat. I've made more positive changes in my life, my brief membership only three months so far than I did through years of counseling. Yes, Brian Johnson, you are a rock star. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And I'm making huge strides in optimizing my life as a result of your philosopher's notes and optimal living classes. I spend $19 a month on my gym membership to take care of my body. A mere $10 a month on an optimal living membership is the biggest value and best investment I've ever made in my emotional, mental, and spiritual health. Thank you for the incredible work you're doing to inspire us to be rock stars in our own lives unbelievably inspiring and humbling. Um, in 24 hours, we received hundreds of uh, extraordinary notes um, from members around the world. So there you go. That's a quick look at what we're up to. 10 bucks a month. Uh, hope to astonish you. There you go.